Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Got another job here today. I'm doing a modification so I can put a Kubota engine into a golf cart, I think it is. But uh, got a hub here that needs adapted to a tapered shaft. So, and uh, the criteria is to try and keep it minimal stick out. So let's take a look at what I got. So this little hub here is gonna be what attaches to the flywheel of the engine. It doesn't need these belts on it and the application that came out of it, that's what it used, but this is gonna have a big variable speed clutch that goes on the end. So the inside of this is unmachined, so my plan is to machine it to a nice true bore center. Uh, it's hard to tell here exactly where that is because none of this outside stuff is turned except for this one little spot on this V groove. Looks like they machined it, so I'm going to use that to determine what the axis of rotation is and center it up on that, bore it out, and now I'm going to press the shaft in it, which I'll have to make the shaft with the taper to match the clutch and weld it in. So I'll probably put the shaft in and weld it in first and then turn it. That way any eccentricity that comes from welding it will be eliminated. And it'll have a nice true running shaft so this clutch doesn't shake around on there. So let's see if I can get half as good as Adam and get this dialed in without it taking all day. It's a little slower on this because this giant chuck's a little unwieldy to rotate around and turn. Uh, you can't just flip it and stop it on a dime because it weighs a thousand pounds. So, Yeah, it didn't take too long. Had her indicator stuck. Alright, so first thing I want to do is to turn off this front groove. So, next I'm going to turn off this one too. So I'll take that back to where the bottom of that recess is. And that'll get this nice and short and tight. And still leave me plenty to get welded onto. To stick that other shaft up in there after I get this board. So I fire up the phase converter and the lathe and get this turned out.
Well, there's my stub shaft stuck in there. I'm gonna put a little retaining compound on it. And heated this up and shrunk fit it in there. But as an extra added precaution, I'm gonna go ahead and run a bead of weld around the outside of this. And on this back side, I left it not quite all the way through. Where I can weld right here. Give a little something to tie in extra. It's cast iron, but I think that I'll be all right. I usually have pretty good luck welding cast iron, so I'm gonna take it over to the welder and give it a go and see if I can get this welder without it cracking and breaking. Well, inspector has come to be sure that the welding job is up to snuff. So, is it approved? Yep, so Bailey thinks it's good. The best good boy. I'll get this cleaned up, chucked back up, and start turning. I don't see any cracks. All right, so I'm setting my taper attachment using uh, a digital readout. So what I'm looking for is a one in 10 taper according to what I found online. So I'll crank over 10 inches and see how close it is to one and make an adjustment. Well, 509. So, let's see if we can't pull it to 10. Less than a half thousand, so I'm gonna go with that. So, get the lathe fired up and do some facing.
There it is, all finished up. Got my half inch fine thread hole in the end. Just drilled and tapped that on this little Monarch. Uh, the memory card was full, so I didn't get that filmed before I had to get that knocked out. So, But you've seen plenty of drilling, tapping, nothing special there. Uh, there's the finished taper. Not too bad a finish on the big Monarch turning that. That's 8620, which is kind of a terry material, so without taking real heavy cuts, you can't get a real shiny finish or run a lot of speed, which I'm probably not gonna do on this machine. But it is really smooth. And don't have any cracks in my welds. I'm welding that steel 8620 to the cast iron. And it is round, so that's like your most likely time for Something to break, welding cast iron. Got a little porosity there, man. But, and for the most part, it looks pretty good. If I had a welding positioner where I could rotate this while I was welding, instead of having to do it in stops and starts, could get it a lot better, but it's pretty good. It'll certainly do the job, plus it's pressed in there, so between that weld and the one on this side, which I had it pretty nice looking until I decided I wanted to use up a little bit of extra rod that I had and tie in some more. Yeah, it just kind of did okay. I, the, this first rod I used worked better than this second rod. I had a hard time getting it to lay down right, so that makes this ugly. But ugly doesn't affect how it works. Could machine it out, but once it's bolted together, it'll never be seen. Y'all be the only ones to ever know about that ugly weld job. It says the part where it ties in was good. It's just where I welded back over it. There it is. Kind of fits. There's the taper on that. And it picks it up, so taper fits good. Hold on its own without even having the bolt. And that's the finished assembly. We'll be able to bolt this to the Kubota engine. It's like the way it came off and I've managed to keep this overall length at least to where this piece mounts. Not really much different than where the belt pulley was. So, shouldn't have any issues with alternators or anything out here clearing since I'm out just as far as it was. But I did keep it fairly short, so. They won't have frame issues with all this sticking out of the end on the go-kart or whatever this is off of. So, I guess it's a Ranger the engine's blowed up in, but it's probably a gasser. Somebody blew it up and now they're converting it to a diesel. But, looks good. Well, I hope you enjoyed getting to see me use the Monster Monarch to do this Kind of small job, but it worked out nice for it. I got the four jaw already set up on it, so I can indicate in more accurately on it than I can on my little Monarch. I keep a three jaw on it for doing fast work. So, like when I drilled that bolt hole, I just used the three jaw. So it's usually off about three thousandths and three thousandths on a bolt hole. It's not gonna make any difference, but I wanted the taper to be as good as I could get it. So I got it down to under a half thousandths run out on that flange adapter so once they bolt it onto the flywheel this thing should be running nice and true shouldn't have any wobble or shake to it and that way when it's running three or four thousand rpms it won't have any vibration to it it'll be nice and smooth so thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and i'll catch you later